Hello, friends. Welcome to Bergen Sages Radio Theater and today's tale of horror as we present The Vengeful Corpse. In a small hillside New England cemetery, a chill evening wind stirs the leafless trees with a complaining murmur. A blood-red moon probes through the branches with grotesque fingers, touching the faded headstones with their eerie light. A frail, drawn-faced young woman sits on an old stone bench, listening acutely to the rustling of the branches, as if to capture some word whisper of the dead's forgotten past. Sarah. Sarah. Sarah, where are you? Oh, Paul, I'm... I'm here! Over here! Sarah, I've been looking all over for you. What are you doing out here anyway? I... I was called out here, Paul. What? The wind. There was a voice on the wind, and it called me to come out here. That's just in your mind, darling. No voice called to you. Yes, Paul, it did. I recognized the voice. You recognized it. Then whose voice was it? It was old and tired and sort of cracked, and yet I could recognize it as my own voice. You heard your own voice. Yes, Paul. And it was strongest right here where I'm sitting now, among my family's graves. Hello there. <gasps> Hello. It's just Mr. Griffin, the caretaker. I asked him to help me look for you. Oh, well. I see you found your wife all right, Mr. Seaton. Yes, I found her all right, Mr. Griffin. I thought I saw Mrs. Seaton come to the graveyard here earlier. I didn't expect she'd still be... <laughs> Oh, boy. What's wrong? <sighs> oh. It's... What's the matter, Mr. Griffin? It's just that I get a sort of funny kind of feeling every time I pass this grave here. What do you mean? What are you talking about? That grave. That one there. The, the one right next to you. Why? What's the matter with it? Well, ain't you noticed? There's only one name on the headstone. The first name, Hester. That's strange. My family name is Randall. Wasn't this woman a Randall? Oh. You don't know the story? Oh? What story are you talking about? Uh... The kin who buried this Hester woman didn't think she deserved the family name, so they left it off the headstone. Why? Why didn't they give Hester her full name? Because they didn't want anybody to know who she was, I guess. You see, Hester was burned at the stake for witchcraft. Witchcraft? Yep, that's what they say. Uh, Mr. Griffin, my wife is an ill woman as... Let him go on, Paul. Oh, but Sarah... What else, Mr. Griffin? Well, that's all, Mrs. Seaton. Except Hester claimed at the stake that they were burning an innocent woman. She could be heard shouting it as the flames licked around her. She threatened with her last breath to get even someday. How could she get even? I don't know. But according to the story I heard, Hester said that this here town owed her the years of her life that they took away. Well, now this is completely ridiculous. It's only a legend. Mr. Griffin, tell me, how many years ago did all this happen? Well, it's, it's right here on the headstone, you see. Hester, a lost soul, born October 13th, 1759. Died. Good heavens. What's wrong? Uh, look, Mrs. Seaton, the date of Hester's death. It's worn away.
Sarah. Uh, yes, Paul? What are you doing out of bed? When did you get up? Why, uh, just a minute ago, I... I can't sleep. She keeps calling me. I hear her voice right in this room ju just a few minutes ago. What? She was begging me to help her, telling me she never really lived, and pleading with me to bring her back to life. Now, Sarah, you've got to... I thought I saw her. Now, Sarah, believe me, there... She was dressed in a black dress, and there was a large W on it. That's for which. And in her hand, she held a flaming torch. I'm going to call the doctor. Someone's at the door. All right, I'll see who it is. No, wait! Wait. I'll go. Ah, good evening, Mrs. Seaton. Why, Judge Foster? I hope I didn't awaken you folks. I saw a light in the window, so I... Oh, that's all right, Judge. Come right in. Ah, thank you. I'm sorry to bother you this time of the night, Mr. Seaton, but I was looking out my window on the other side of the cemetery, and I thought I saw something, or someone prowling around out there, and I wondered if they came over this way. Who was it? Well, I don't know. Someone carrying a torch. A torch? Go on, Judge. Well, of course it could be that my eyes were playing tricks on me. They're not so good. But as far as I could make out, it was a woman dressed in black. Paul! You saw this woman, Judge? You're sure? Yeah. I'm pretty sure I saw her. Of course, it's kind of dark out there. But it looked to me there was something on the front of her dress. What? What do you mean? Well, there was the letter W. A big white letter W on her. Hester! It was Hester! Just as I... No. I... No, Sarah. Hester? Who's Hester? Hester Randall. That's who you saw. She was in this house. No. It must be a trick. You see, someone is trying to frighten you. To make you worse. Now, now. Hold on, folks. Hester Randall was buried over 200 years ago. She's come back to life. Mrs. Seaton, I... Now, Judge, my, my wife is ill. She doesn't realize what she's saying. I know Hester's alive. You didn't believe me, Paul, but Judge Foster saw her too. Well, I didn't see anyone who's been dead 200 years. What is it, Judge? Don't you smell it? Yes. Something burning. It's the odor of burning flesh. Look, out there on the back lawn, stuck in the earth. A torch, a flaming torch. Sarah, I tell you, it's useless to have me dig up this grave. I've got to know, Paul. It's the only way I'll be sure. Careful, Mr. Seaton. You're just about deep enough for the coffin now, if it's still there. Judge, I don't know how you could sanction a thing like this. Well, Mr. Seaton, you see, I want to be sure to. But it's ridiculous. Ah, you've struck one with the shovel. Yes, it's the coffin, all right. You'd better go easy now. That wood is soft with age and half rotted away. Okay. I think we can open it now. Wait. I'll give you a hand with the lid. There's something inside it. A uh, body. Charred. It's a body, all right. Only it isn't a woman's. 
You can still make out the face. It's Griffin! Caretaker! Dr. Norton, I am so glad you've gotten here. I came as soon as I could, Mr. Seaton. What's wrong? <sighs> She's worse, Doctor. Oh. Much worse. She's been in her room all day, hiding like a frightened child. I, I think the reading made it worse. Reading? What reading? Well, for the past few days, she's been reading books about her family history. Why did you let her have them? Well, because at first, they seemed to quiet her. Since the night we found Mr. Griffin's body in that grave, she's wanted to know more and more about Hester Randall. Paul! Oh, Sarah. Dr. Norton's here, dear. You've got to warn him, Paul, before it's too late! Warn whom, Mrs. Seaton? Judge Foster! He's in danger! Hester will kill him next! What? It's in the records of the court! The magistrate who sentenced Hester to death in this state was a man named Foster! Now, now, Mrs. Seaton, you're just upset. Please! Believe me! Judge Foster is a direct descendant of that magistrate! Sarah! Sarah! Hester's dead! Dear, the dead can do no harm. Paul! Paul! You don't understand! She's killed one man already, and now she's going to kill another! She swore she'd get that revenge! On the magistrate, and on the man who was her accuser! Mrs. Seaton, all this took place over 200 years ago. Then what about Mr. Griffin? Well... What do you mean, Sarah? He had the same name, too. According to the record, Hester's accuser was a man named Richard Griffin. Judge Foster, my wife insisted that I come over here and warn you about... Hester. Well, thank you, Mr. Seaton, for troubling. But I'm not a bit worried about the similarity of names. Well... I didn't admit it to Sarah, but the coincidence with Griffin was strange. Oh, the dead never frightened me, Mr. Seaton. But thank you for coming over. Oh, by the way, can I drive you home? No, thanks. Dr. Norton is waiting for me outside. Good night. Good night, Mr. Seaton. Now, where did I put those glasses of mine? I'm sure I left them here on the table. Say, who opened that door? Is that you? Come back, Mr. Seaton. Well, confounded whoever it is, answer me. Who's out there? Mm. <laughs> it's me, you prosperous just duke. What? Who, who are you? Your conscience has been dimmed by the evil of your acts. Who am I? Mark you well this torch I light. Now mark you also my garb, this black garment I wear, and upon which you have impressed the wicked W. Hester! I, Satan's magistrate, Hester Randall. Paul! Paul! Wake up! 
Huh? Oh, please wake up! Oh, Sarah. What's the matter, darling? I've just had a terrible dream. I'm afraid. Now, easy, dear. I dreamt that Judge Foster was killed tonight by Hester. You did warn Judge Foster, didn't you, Paul? Yes, yes, uh, of course, Sarah. Where are you going, dear? I'm getting dressed. I'm going down to tell the judge myself. You're staying here. Oh, please, let me go. It means a man's life. You heard what Dr. Norton said. Under no circumstances are you to leave the house. You're to talk to no one. Why am I being kept here like a prisoner? Why don't you let me speak to... <sighs> what was that? Sounded like a door banging in the wind. Yes, there it is again. Didn't you lock that back door? Uh-huh. I'm sure I did. I'd better see what happened. Wait! I'm going with you. I... I'd better turn on a light here in the kitchen. No, you won't have to. I can see. It's the door, all right. I guess I must have forgotten to spring the latch. <gasps> Sarah, what's the matter? Out there, by the trees at the end of the lawn, I thought I saw a figure. All right, just stay here, dear. I'll be right back. There's no one out here, Sarah. You're sure? Positive. Probably just saw a shadow. Oh, there is someone right here. <coughs> Sarah! Sarah, what happened? Sarah? Where are you? Sarah! She was standing right here, Sheriff. Right here at the back door when I heard her scream. And there wasn't a sign of her when you got back here to the door? Not a sign of her. Well, folks don't just vanish into thin air, Mr. Seaton. She must be around here someplace. I've got to find her before it's too late. Too late? What do you mean by that? I... I, I don't know, really. I have a feeling that... Oh, now you're not going to tell me about dead witches returning too, are you? Don't tell me you believe in that stuff. I don't know what to believe. Sheriff! Is that you, Sheriff? Yes. Who's there? Dr. Norton! You'd better come with me, Sheriff. I just discovered something on the side of the road about a mile away. Mr. Seaton, I... I think you'd better wait here. What is it, Dr. Norton? What have you found? I'd... rather you wait here, as I said before. Until we're sure. What are you trying to hide from me? I guess you better speak up, Doctor. If it's something that concerns Mr. Seaton, maybe he should know. All right, Sheriff. When I made the turn into the road, my headlights caught it in a ditch. I wasn't sure at first, so I stopped the car and got out. It was a body in the ditch. A charred body. This way, Sheriff. Over here to the right. Where is she? Easy now, Mr. Seaton. Right here, Sheriff. Wait until I switch on the flashlight. There. It, is it Sarah? 
Just a moment, Mr. Seaton. Dr. Norton has made a mistake. What? This corpse isn't your wife. I can tell by that ring. It's the ring that Judge Foster always wore. Yes, Sheriff. Any news yet? Well, why can't your men find her? It's been six hours already. No, I haven't heard a word. Yes. Please call me as soon as you hear anything, will ya? Okay. Thanks. Who's there? Who is it? Paul! Open the door! Sarah! Yes! Yes! Quick! Let me in! Oh, Sarah! Sarah, thank the Lord you're all right. Oh, Paul! Darling, where have you been? What happened to you? Wait! Lock the door! Quickly! She doesn't know I've come back. She's still looking for me. Who? Hester! She was out there, Paul. That's why I ran from the house. She called to me from the road, made me go with her. Huh? Go where? To the cemetery. She kept me there, torturing me, begging me to change places with her. Darling, you're not making sense. Please, please, please believe me. We've got to get away from here, tonight, right now. She'll kill me if we don't. She wants my life for the one she never lived. Now stop it. Stop. Now get a hold of yourself. Because there's no such woman as Hester Randall. Ryan! I saw her! I talked to her! The woman you saw is somebody else. Somebody living who wants you to believe that she's Hester. She wants everybody to believe it. But, but why, Paul? Why? Because she's a cold-blooded murderess. She's killed two people already, and she's trying to drive you out of your mind completely. But then who? Who could it be? I wasn't sure before. Now I'm almost positive. Now you saw this Hester, Sarah. What was she like? Uh... Like... A ghost. Like... A shadow. In the light. You... You can see her face, and yet... You can see through it. Beyond. No. That was just an illusion created by the night, dear. And perhaps some other tricks of a clever, scheming woman. You'll see. I'll prove! <gasps> it's the back door again. It's blown open again. Leave it! We've got to get out of here! No, no. You stay here. I'm going to see who opened that door. Please hurry! Don't leave me alone for long! What is it, Sarah? Don't come in here! Don't come back! Run! Away! As fast as you can! What's the matter? Don't come in here! She's here! Hester! Sarah! Look out! I've got the gun out of my desk! I'm going to kill her! Sarah! Sarah, are you alright? I've killed her, Paul. She won't torture me anymore. I've killed Hester. She came toward me, and I fired. Sarah, there's no one in this room, dear. 
Over there, in the hall, she's there. Where? I don't see... Good Lord, you've... broken the mirror. What? You shot at yourself. No, it can't be. I can't be her, and yet I saw her face. And it was my face, too. Sarah, it was you. You all the time. I am Hester, fair gentlemen. It is warming to have such a friend as you to stand beside me in this mockery of justice. Oh, Sarah. Sarah. Run! Run as fast as you can, Paul! I was wrong! I haven't killed her! Run! Sarah, I've got to help you. I've got to explain to you that- Thou art not, Sarah. Not anymore. Can't you see who I am? Can't you see who has taken my place? Sarah, listen to me. I love you. Please, please come back to me. Sarah's gone. Now I can live the years they took from me. Sarah! See in my hand this pistol? We will bid it, I say. It will come with me. Still no answer, Sheriff? Uh, no answer, Dr. Norton. I can't understand it. Mr. Seaton was home when I called just 15 minutes ago. I warned you, Sheriff, to have that house closely watched. Well, I can't do a hundred things at once. I've got every available deputy out looking for Mrs. Seaton. Don't you realize? She may have gone back to their house. Don't you realize? She's the one that might be Hester. <laughs> Mrs. Seaton? Hester? What the deuce are you talking about? I'm talking about dual personality. Mrs. Seaton is suffering from a nervous breakdown, and it's entirely possible that she's the one that killed Griffin and Judge Foster. Why, you should have told me this before, Doctor. Come on, we're getting right over to the Seaton house. Paul. They buried Hester's body here, dishonored and unnamed. But Paul, you believe in my innocence? Yes, Sarah. We'd better go back, dear. Back? Just to the house. It's very cold here. It's cold everywhere, Paul. I feel the chill of death coming near me. You and I are going back, back through time, to an age where no one can harm us. This torch I hold, it will free us forever. Now, now wait. Sarah, please, listen. Now try to understand, dear. Ease your mind. The flames will be of no pain. I know, because I've been through such a death before. No. Now wait, Sarah. Uh... Oh, Paul. Hester's going. Oh, Sarah. Mr. Seaton! Are you alright? Yes. Looks like we got here just in time. Paul, 
She's going from me. Forever. Oh. Oh, Sarah. She's dead, Mr. Seaton. I'm sorry, Mr. Seaton. Sheriff? What is it? What's the matter? Look. At the headstone. I didn't notice that before. It's been recut. Well, what do you mean? Well, don't you see what it says? Hester Randall, a lost soul. Born October 13th, 1759. Died March 10th, 2022. Next time you visit a graveyard, don't be alarmed if one of the headstones move. It's probably Hester saying hello. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode of Bergen Stages Radio Theater, The Vengeful Corpse by Edward Adamson. Featured in today's cast were Ethan Bennell as Paul, Aaron Harris as Sarah Hester, Owen Titikin as Mr. Griffin, David Legrand as Judge Foster, Nicholas Cirillo as Dr. Norton, and Christine Dunning as the Sheriff. Dean Matson is our recording engineer and sound effects creator. Marianne Co Rivera is our video engineer, and I am Jim Bumgarner, your host. Thank you to Bergen Community College, the BCC Office of Student Life, and the BCC Media Technologies Department. Tune in to another episode of Bergen Stages Radio Theater soon, and be sure to catch all of our earlier episodes available on YouTube, Spotify, and at the BCC Library. Until next time, don't touch that dial, and if you do, remember to disinfect it first. <laughs>